So the next part of collecting data is something that's a recap from GCSE. It's just to do with different types of data. And you need to know how to be able to ca um, classify different kinds of information that you might be gathering. Now, I've done it as a bit of a flow diagram. So you start at the top part of this diagram. The first thing that you need to, de you need to decide is if something is qualitative, which means it's categorical, or if something is quantitative. Now, qualitative, the beginning of this word looks like the word quality. And you might say, like, what was the quality like of, uh, how would you describe something? What was its quality? And you normally use non-numerical things like that. So the quality of something could be its color. You'll notice that this word starts with quantity or quantitative. And quantity is how you would measure how many things there are of something. So this would be like a numerical value. That's what it would be for quantitative data. Then quantitative, quantitative data, it's very difficult to say with the, all the T's in there, is numerical values that get split into two different kinds. You then have discrete data. And discrete data can only take specific values like your shoe size or the number of children in a family. Notice I've said shoe size here, and I haven't said um, the size of your foot, because the shoe size, you can go into the shop and you can only buy set shoe sizes, whereas the size of your foot is actually something that is continuous because it can take any decimal value, and it's pos any decimal value that's possible within a specified range. So I've said here also, note that while discrete variables only allow specific values, the range could still be infinite. So it could be like the number of attempts before success on something. Um, doesn't have to be in a set range. You could take an infinite number of times until you achieve success on a particular game or whatever it would be. So I've just got a few things down here that we're going to very briefly think about what type of data they are, because these are little one markers that will come up in your stats exam. It says, Eddie carries out a survey about the pet dogs his classmates own decide what type of data the following are. So make sure that, first of all, we decide whether it's one of these two. And if it's quantitative, you then have to decide if it's discrete or continuous. So how many dogs each person owns is what? Discrete, OK? So it's going to be quanti quantitative, quantitative, and it's going to be discrete. Pretty simple, OK? B says the color of the dogs, which is? Qualitative, because it's being measured with words. The type of dog? Qualitative. Yeah, qualitative. Forgive me for this being incredibly um, boring. The name of each dog? It's OK. The name of each dog? No, because it's not a numerical value. Unless you've decided to name your dog 13 or 18 or something. It's qualitative. And the age of each dog? So this is where I'm not sure. OK, it's definitely quantitative. So it depends. Why do you think we, are, why do you think we might disagree on this? Who, can, who was that? Was that Prograt? Were you saying that this is um, discrete? Why were you saying it's discrete? Never mind, never mind. That's no, because I think it could be discrete. It's like if I said to you, uh, Amina, how old are you? Mm. Okay, 16. How old are you? Mm. How old am I? 31. You just say like a discrete age. No one says I'm 16 years, 7 months, 3 days, 5 hours, 2.65 seconds. So even though our, like, the time we've been alive is continuous, maybe the age of each dog is discrete. I don't know. kind of depends on the context of what's happened here. So this could be discrete, or it could possibly be continuous, depending on what's actually being measured. If we wanted the exact age of something. It's funny, because when you talk to people about like babies, and they say, how old is the baby? They don't say zero or one. They will say, like, oh, three weeks old. Or, and then suddenly it gets to a point where you just say, I'm 16. So it depends on the context of what's being asked here. But I think the age of each dog, I think probably continuous. I don't know. I'm not sure. The mass of each dog, though, I'm pretty sure on this one, is going to be quantitative and continuous. Because although you would probably round the, um, the dog's weight, it will have an exact value. It will need to be put into a group. And I'm, I'm kind of settling more 
on the age of the dog being continuous rather than discrete. I think discrete is probably how, as humans, we describe it. But in reality, the age of the dog is a continuous measure, I think. What do you think? What would you go for? I said, I probably, I'm going to go with continuous, but it's up for debate. And then the other thing that comes up in exercise 1D is some stuff to do with grouped data. Okay, this is all stuff you know from GCSE, so I'm not going to ask us to do this in class. You're going to have a look at it at homework. But you might have grouped data that looks like this in a table. And I've said that data can be grouped for conciseness at the expense of losing the exact original values. So this means if you put data into groups, you don't have access to what the original values actually were. So this one that I've got down here, this, um, this group that I've got, is actually not called a group. It's known as a class interval. So you need to be familiar with the term class interval referring to this particular description that we've got. And you also need to know that the bottom number is the lower class boundary. The top number is the upper class boundary. And to find the midpoint, how do you find the midpoint of two numbers? You just add them, get the total, and divide it by two. So the midpoint of this is going to be 45. And you also need to know that the class width is how wide that group is. Again, pretty obvious. So it's going to be 70 take away 20. It's the, the gap between them, which is 50. So the class width of this is 50. And just to kind of break down what this is actually saying is that the weights of, let's think we were talking about the dogs in the previous example. It's saying that the weights of the dogs are between 20 kilograms. They could be equal to 20 kilograms, but they have to be less than 70 kilograms. And um, that's just how the class intervals work. So you're going to just do, um, at home, you're going to do exercise 1D and think about the different kinds of things to do with different types of data and grouped data as well.